Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, it can't be overestimated the value and the need for water in our lives, in what we uh, consume food-wise, and what it provides in flood control, what it provides in hydroelectric power, just water at the tap, and even environmental water. As a representative of California, we certainly go through a lot of gyrations and a lot of fights over water. As uh, Mark Twain is quoted as saying, as whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting, especially in California. So there's plenty of that. So what, what's, what's going on underway? Well, back uh, in the 30s and then in the 60s, two major projects were built to turn California into the blooming land that it is of so much bounty, so much great agriculture, so much opportunity. With the Federal Water Project back uh, started in the 30s and the State Water Project conceived in the 50s and much of it built in the 60s. Uh, in my own district, we have two very large dams, Shasta Dam at four and a half million acre feet and Lake Oroville at three and a half million acre feet. And so those have made so much possibility for people of California, but not just California. Really, it's helped the whole country. And I'll tell you why. Because agriculture is a key element of the sustainability for this country. It's, uh, it's uh, strategic needs for uh, being able to feed itself, defend itself, it's, uh, it can't be overestimated how important that is as well. So what do we currently have happening in California and in the Western states? The extreme environmental left is moving to remove more and more dams as we speak. Right now in the Klamath River up in the north end of my district, there's four dams that are in the target sites for that. They make hydroelectric power. Now as a sidebar here, what do we hear constantly, constantly in this chamber? Almost every conversation is filtered through climate change. And so when you have sources of power that are zero CO2, such as hydroelectric power, as well as nuclear power, and very clean, efficient power, such as natural gas, which is being phased out or pushed out by the Biden administration as we can't explore or build pipelines for it, where are we gonna get the power if you want to tear these dams out, if you want to take all these inputs for producing electricity in this country, at the same time as you're forcing more and more things to be powered by electricity, vehicles, big trucks. I see on the internet there, there's a major cargo carrier saying, we need to electrify our aircraft. I mean, how heavy will an airplane be when you load it up with batteries? Will it have any cargo capacity left? A big, a big uh, semi-rig for the highways is 80,000 pounds GVW. Um, by the time they electrify it and add two 8,000 pound batteries to that, 16,000 more pounds of cargo you'll have to take off. So that means five trucks will have to now do the job of four trucks. This is where we're going. So hydroelectric power is extremely important to fuel whatever level of electricity we're going to be using. You know, they want to ban gas stoves, they want to ban gas heaters. If we're going to have more and more of a reliability on electric grid, which I hope we don't go through these crazy policies, we're going to continue to need this power. So why are we tearing dams out? They want to tear them out in the state of Washington. And they're talking about, as we just visited Colorado River on the Western Caucus over the weekend, the Hoover Dam. What a mighty structure that is with eight great big power plant turbines in there. And above that, <clears throat> Lake Powell. They're talking about, well, maybe we don't really need Lake Powell anymore because we're in the middle of a drought situation. Yeah, we're in a tough drought, but what if we didn't have those to begin with? We wouldn't have stored that water that has helped to sustain for several years through many years of drought, actually. Back in my own district with the full, full Lake Shasta and full Lake Oroville, under the original conditions, that would get you five years through, through five years worth of drought, still storing water for agriculture, for people at the tap, for hydroelectric power, and yes, even recreation. So what is the agenda that at the same time they want to force more and more electric vehicles and electric everything and rip out the means to make the power? It doesn't make a lick of sense. I just see where Ford Motor Company, they lost about four and a half billion dollars last year electrifying. They had the original influx of people buying those electric vehicles. Now that's fallen off because once the incentives go away or once you can get a sticker to drive it in the fast lane in certain areas in California, the rest of the market probably isn't too interested in that. Their F-150 Lightning, they're pulling back production by at least half, maybe more, because people aren't buying these vehicles like they supposedly are projecting. 
Stored water is an incredibly good thing. Why it matters to the rest of the country as well is California has grown so many amazing crops over the years with the innovation and, and uh, ability to farm the lands that we've had in the San Joaquin Valley. We would not have the food that the whole country eats since 90 to 99% of these crops expired. are grown in California. I yield back.